Hello, everybody. Oh, that was like, it was the best school assembly ever. Everybody just went quiet. I, I don't normally do that when I walk into a room. Uh, good evening, my Lord, Lieutenant, High Sheriff, and Your Worship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Celebrating Success. I think that's the point where you cheer. Okay, don't worry. I will, at every occasion, point out when you need to clap and cheer and whoop, all right? Um, th we're going a bit more butlins tonight. Um, so we need lots of noise and lots of clapping and cheering and however you want to support your, your colleagues. Um, it's absolutely wonderful that you have invited me back this year. I'm absolutely honoured that you did. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Zoe Hansen. Um, I used to be on the Heart Breakfast Show. Before that, I was Zoe and Gillies on Power FM. Yeah, that's a blast from the past. Um, and now, thanks to Amanda Holden, I get to have a lion. <laughs> um, but, the, well, it's my good news. I'm sure that some of you would think, oh, no, not again. Um, I've now started working for BBC Radio Solent as well. So um, you may be able to hear my dulcet tones or turn it off when you know that it's me. Um, now, I'm surprised that I haven't seen any of you turn up at my house before. I don't mean it like that. Um, I have a six-year-old daughter um, who thinks that when the smoke alarm goes off, that's the cue to sit at the dinner table because there's some food coming. <laughs> it's not when the food's coming because I've got to ch scrape all the charcoal off first before I serve it to her. Um, but it's an absolute honour to be back here to um, support these awards and host these for you. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so before we start proper, um, there are a couple of health and safety notes. Firstly, fire safety. Anybody know anything about it? I think I'm in good hands tonight. There's no planned fire drills this evening. Uh, but if you do hear the fire alarm, please proceed to the nearest exit and assemble in the main staff car park. Uh, there might be a few people in here that may know the drill. Uh, secondly, the stage is quite low, so mind your step as you come up. And thirdly, I want you to support your colleagues here, okay? You know, like I was saying about making some noise and giving them a clap and all of that stuff. You know what? It's fantastic when you do that because coming up on stage, you know, it's maybe not the sort of thing that you're, you're used to. And so to have your colleagues support you like that is wonderful. So please do that. Let's have a little practice, shall we? Shall we? Yes. Come on, come with me. Yes. All right. And in a holiday camp style, that's not good enough. <laughs> so, after three, you're going to make loads and loads of noise, clap, cheer, stamp your feet and go wild. All right, one, two, three. Yeah. Right. So if you come up to receive an award tonight, that's the sort of reception you're going to get, OK? Every time. I'm watching everyone. Um, we are... Um, sorry, let's get started. We're here to celebrate the best and most dedicated staff in Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service and the partner organisation that provides such valuable support. I'm delighted to be back, as I say. Um, it's such a brilliant award ceremony. I just loved it last year. Um, we're live streaming tonight's event, so welcome to all of you um, who are watching online. Everybody can turn around and give them a wave look. There we go. Woo! Um, welcome to all of you, uh, plus you can share your pictures and your messages throughout the night on social media using the hashtag HFRSAwards19, okay. So there we go, to start things off, please sit back and enjoy this short film to give you an insight into the diverse work of the service and just a hint of some of tonight's nominations. So I joined the fire service because I'm quite an active person. I wanted to do something that helps people. It's been so exciting. Absolutely loved every minute of it.
people are talking more about AFSA and wanting to attend our conferences. Just shy of 19,000 feet above Everest Space Camp. So far we've raised over 12,500 pounds. Without my team, I'm unable to do my job properly. People want to come to work and enjoy being here. Taking part of the visits are really vital because we go to a lot of vulnerable people. Most people know who I am, yeah. They normally come and see me because they want something. Working with Hampshire Fire and Rescue is always a very inspirational experience. Very good, very good, yes. So, before we start the awards in earnest, please welcome Chief Fire Officer Neil Odin to the stage to make his opening address. Thank you, Zoe. Um, my Lord, Lieutenant, High Sheriff, Madam Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's once again an absolute privilege, privilege to be here doing this tonight in our wonderful new room. So thank you for all those people that made this building possible. What a fantastic sight. The red lighting isn't normally here, I would add. This is not the normally way we dress up our rooms, but it is, I think, I think you'll agree, a fantastic venue setting for what we plan to do this evening. Um, so on behalf of the fire authorities, my great pleasure to welcome you to all to our 14th Celebrating Success event this evening. It is our new conference facilities. It is shared with the constabulary here at headquarters. And you'll notice walking around the building, you'll see words like fire, police, police, fire. That's just so no one spills ex feels extra special or left out. <laughs> it's a really important aspect of what we did to make sure our teams felt welcome in our building, our shared venue. So uh, a huge welcome to, to recipients, nominees, and loved ones and friends and families, as well as our supporting partners that look after us, help us out there in our environment doing our job. As I say quite often, none of us can do our job alone. We all need each other to make sure we do that. And that extends to loved ones as well as it does for emergency partners out there on the, on the day or night of the incident. I always look forward to this event, these events, but also dread them. Now, you'd think, why would I dread them, apart from having to stand on the stage and talk to you fine people? But I dread them in case you miss someone fantastic out there that's doing something excellent. Because what we rely on these events is someone nominating someone else to say, I think what you're doing is incredible, so I'm going to nominate you. Now that is an amazing part of our cultural change. That's starting to grow in popularity. People are starting to do that much more often. Holding the hands up of colleagues and friends and partners that are doing an excellent job in our community saying, I think you're worthy of nomination and I'm going to put your name forward. So thank you to all those people that took the time to do that. I wanted also to mention, because tonight is about Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, but as you'll know, I'm sure, we are working very closely now with the Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Service, and we are due to combine with the authorities very shortly next year. So in the future, we'll look at having a joint event, but tonight you'll have to excuse the words, we're so unused to doing it now, aren't we? We've trained ourselves in saying Hampshire and the Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Services, but tonight is particularly focused on Hampshire for the reasons I've just explained. So the Isle of Wight folks out there, please bear with us. We'll be there. We'll all be joining up very soon. So this tonight allows us to, to reflect on key activities and incidents that have occurred over the last years. The things that people have done and gone above and beyond what you'd expect from them, done their job excellently and ab above and beyond that. Operationally, we have been sorely tested. You saw the pictures up there. Always makes me kind of grimace a little bit when we talk about celebrating success and you see the gutted remains of buildings that have been burnt out. But actually, our communities feel safer because of what we do. Those buildings are sometimes difficult to deal with and the Ocado fire is no different. It was the biggest and most technical fire that certainly I've faced over my years in the service, and I'm sure many others in the room also. And the one I don't really want to face again it involved seven fire and rescue services and many hundreds of firefighters and support staff over the four days. And in particular, we'll hear about later a bit more of the rapid relief team in the many thousands of burgers they provided for us over that period of time. Thank you, team, for that. 
So that incident presented a new type of fire with new, te- new challenges and technicalities that we'd never faced before, which we shared nationally. And the work we've done, Shadda Dickinson, our ACO, has shared that nationally and continues the roadshow that is about learning from our incidents. We have been well regarded at Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service for sharing and learning and being really open about the things we get wrong, the things we can improve and the things we're good at. The first two are the most important in a way because that way we protect and defend ourselves and our communities and get better and better. But we must not miss the opportunity of celebrating what we're good at and that's what tonight is about. I'll never forget the incident in Ocado and others we have across the year and the bravery and courage shown by our staff during that period. We also have welcomed this year our new recruits who passed out with flying colours in October. And it was a really, we had a, a passing out parade in here for them, and it was a fantastic event for them and their families to see them join the family of the Fire and Rescue Service and their future that that holds for them in the future. I'm delighted to see that they've already shown their passion. In fact, there's a picture of a few of them on, on there already about serving our communities. They've been out there doing their job already, and I've seen the numerous tweets from them already saying how much fun they're having uh, and the things they're doing for their communities. So that's a fantastic scene to see their, their training is making a difference to our communities already. We also took a, st- a really important step forward in the mental health support we give to all of our teams. In a growing world of difficulties in our, in our society, about recognising the importance of talking about mental health is something the Fire Rescue Service over the years has been poor at to allow people not to be OK. And the phrase of it's OK not to be OK is now being talked about a lot more and allowing people to say, I need help. So we entered into the Where's Your Head At manifesto and we've just started the high risk psychological screening, which the constabulary have also done. Some of you may have seen that on the news this morning. We've started that work with our high-risk staff to make sure we psychological screen them to make sure they are safe and able to continue their careers in the difficult job they do. You also saw another great picture of our team that are up on Everest Base Camp. I think they're on the way down now, I hope. And what a great job they've done. Uh, They've made it all the way up. All the team got up there and a fantastic example of teamwork, camaraderie and a great moment to raise money for the Firefighters Charity also. So well done to them and indeed a mental health charity. So my, my, my thoughts go out to them and I hope they make it down okay. So also amid a tough couple of years, we also received the outstanding grade for our Prince's Trust delivery. You know, some may know our Prince's Trust team work ever so hard to develop young people that uh, can give them a chance to succeed in our society that may well be on the edge or fringes of society. They do such a good job and this year we just received the outstanding Ofsted grading for the work they're doing, which is a great uh, achievement. Round of applause to that team, Rafi. <laughs> I know I'm supported by our fire authority when I reflect our passion and my admiration for the, all of our teams and the work that you all do out there, consistently going above and beyond delivering the service to all of our residents across Hampshire and indeed the Isle of Wight. See, I did it instinctively then. Um, across all of our area that we're responsible for. Such achievement and excellence confirms what an inspirational organisation we are part of. And I'm just so proud to be at head of this organisation and doing the things we do. When I speak to fellow chiefs across the country and I hear the trials and tribulations they're having in the challenges they face, we all face challenges, of course we do, but I'm so proud to talk about Hampshire in a way I can because of the work that you guys do out there. So much of the dedication of our staff um, provide can only come with the support we receive from our families and friends, you people in the audience tonight. So I'm pleased that I'm able to welcome so many of you here to support your loved ones in, their, in this event. So... Thank you. I will stop rambling on. I want to get on with the actual awards because it's important we're here for them not to listen to me. But tonight is about celebrating what they have done and the nominations. You are all winners, nominated or you are receivers of the actual awards. That doesn't matter. The fact you are here tonight and you've been nominated by your colleagues, the shortlisting, the longlisting, just to be nominated is incredible. And for someone to nominate you is really incredible also. Thank you for the work you've done. I'll be able assisted tonight by Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant Mr Nigel Atkinson who will help me present the Queen's Long Service Good Conduct Medals for those who have reached 20 years in service, which is excellent, thank you for that. Also be joined by the Chairman of the Fire Authority, Councillor Chris Carter, who will present the Long Service uh, Partnership Awards. Thank you to the Chairman for coming tonight also. Um, thank you particularly, to add to that, particularly to the, our sponsors tonight. And we're well and ably supported by ExxonMobil at the uh, Forley Refinery and uh, Fire Angel who have joined us here tonight as well. Thank you all for your support. So a reminder, we're being streamed, so make sure you wave to the camera when you're up here as well. And uh, thank you all those for joining us online. It's something which we're we're seeing with amazing increase, that people who join us online to watch these events when they can't be here in person.
So please can I ask you to give your massive support to people up here when they get, when they get called to the stage and when they sit down again. Please keep your support going. We'll get through this evening because it's warm in here. It's warm in here, I think, because it's red. So just put that in your mind. It's not that warm, it's just red. <laughs> but we may well get the air conditioning going as well to keep you nice and cool. But keep those hands working. Lots of applause. Thank you so much for coming. I look forward to meeting many, many of you during this evening. And again, once again, thanks and amazing congratulations to those who are nominated and those who come up for their awards. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Well, that was very nice. Um, please now welcome Councillor Chris Carter, Chair of Hampshire Fire and Rescue Authority, to the stage. Thank you, Zoe. Um, Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant, High Sheriff, um, Your Worship, distinguished guests, uh, firefighters, and ladies and gentlemen, I think, uh, just a step back there, I think all the firefighters are distinguished guests. So congratulations to you all who, who are here tonight and are going to be honoured. Um, it's always an honour to attend this event and celebrate the astound, it, it, astonishing achievements of the service. It's a particular honour for me to be here with you tonight because I wasn't able to be here last year when I was um, sadly taken ill um, actually just the day before. Um, I'm, a, I'm always amazed and humbled to read the inspiring stories behind the awards. Um, there's been a real bumper crop of nominations this year, which reflects the dedication of the team to make life safer, often in the most challenging circumstances. We expect uh, the fire authority and the fire service expects to be busy um, and this past year has been no exception. Uh, we hosted the Asian Fire Service Association Conference and the launch of Back Black History Month. Our involvement in these events shows that the place our people have in the hearts of the local communities and I like others who attended I'm sure felt they were part of something truly special. And I was at those events, and I can honestly tell you they were really special events. Um, I'm also delighted to see the Cadets program being rolled out in Gosport and Eastleigh, following the success in Ringwood. Uh, Ringwood, of course, has been going for very many years. Gosport and Eastleigh started this year and been making very good progress. And we've seen the cadets here tonight, um, and I think we should say thank you to the cadets for their, their sterling effort to serve us with the, um, the food and look after us when we came in. So well done to the cadets. <laughs> so I just mentioned their Gosport and Eastley. Gosport includes um, Fairham, um, but hopefully we will have um, further cadet units established over the um, coming um, couple of years. Uh, and the cadet project um, helps young people uh, gain qualification and, and builds their confidence and leadership skills. Now I did actually attend um, uh, one of the uh, cadet evenings down at Gosport and we had a, a question and answer session from the cadets. Um, now you all know I'm a County Councillor, so have to have questions from members of the public sometimes. But the questions that came from the cadets were incredibly perceptive, and they asked some very difficult questions. So, well done to them. So, um, sorry, I took myself off the script there. <laughs> On a corporate level, we're moving closer to the Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Service with our plans for a combined authority. Um, um, and uh, after years of close partnership working, um, we're looking forward to um, the combined authority um, coming to fruition. This has been uh, the first year where we've um, been uh, subject to um, scrutiny by Her Majesty's Inspectorate also, so and that will happen again next year. 
We've been working uh, on laying out our vision for the next five years. If you've not yet had your say, I would urge you to go online and do so. You only have a few days left to do so. I've seen an incredible amount of work to attract on-call firefighters. And of course, we've welcomed our newest full-time recruits who have come from a variety of backgrounds. And I've been heartened to see many more women pursuing careers in what I consider to be the best fire and rescue service in the country. Members of the new intake have come from many walks of life, including a former, former England football goalkeeper, an Irish dancer, a rugby player, a helicopter pilot, a soldier, a police officer, and even a dog groomer. This new generation of firefighters will, I'm sure, make the people of Hampshire feel confident in the knowledge that whatever the situation, the fire service will always be there for them. This peace of mind is perhaps because of the extraordinary work you all do each and every day. I would like to thank you all for your professional perspective and as chairman of the Fire, fire Authority uh, and on a personal level as resident of Hampshire. So thank you all to the firefighters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Carter. And so it's on with the awards. Whoop. <laughs> OK. Our first section is all about celebrating our people. This includes a wide variety of awards from sporting achievements to long service medals, but with a common thread, commitment to the service. Our first award recognises an individual or team for their commitment to the services Sports and Social Association. The award has been nominated by the Executive Committee and will be presented by Assistant Chief Fire Officer Shantha Dickinson, Chair of the Association. Now we have that. And I am delighted tonight to announce that this year's award goes to Matthew Rowe, North Group Chair. Matt has been North Group Chair since 2013 and is also whole time watch manager at Basingstoke Fire Station. And if that wasn't enough, he's also a proficient scooter rider, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> okay, our next award is the Innovation of the Year which goes to an individual or team who has developed and implemented a brand new initiative that's made a significant contribution to the service or made our communities safer. Let's hear a little about our shortlisted nominees. <coughs> Innovation of the Year. Amber's Warning Campaign. Amber's Warning is our latest community safety cooking campaign and is based on a young mum, Amber, who unfortunately came home after a night out, put some chips on and went to bed. Thankfully, Rushmore crew were on hand to rescue her and she was able to replay her story so that people in Hampshire would be safer. I think this campaign deserves to be recognised because it broke new ground in so many ways, putting posters up inside tower blocks, to YouTube adverts, to the, the case study involved. But even if none of those things had happened, I think the sheer quality served to be recognised. Katie Round was absolutely key, probably been the best coordinated campaign I've ever worked on. She got different people involved, different parts of the service, different organisations in a way it just hasn't been done before. The fear that they must have felt looking for a little baby. I couldn't see anything. It's because of people like Amber that we can share these stories because otherwise they don't mean anything. An incident happens and we get a few lines in the press to say, oh great, we saved somebody, or we don't talk about the impact 
the devastation that it's caused to her home. She lost everything and she had to start again. And you can't imagine putting yourself in that situation to have to do that. Organisational performance teams, information technicians and analyst team. The Community Insights tool is something that we've developed in response to a request that came in from the Inclusion and Diversity team. What do we know about our communities? So we went from a request of, I have an idea, I have a concept, and that's now developed and that's been translated into something which is practical and realised for the service to use. So we had to do some research to find out more about our communities surrounding our stations and in Hampshire. So we've done a bit of research on that and we've put it up into an interactive map. So it's a visualisation of different information layers so people can instantly understand what's going on in their local communities. Where you can actually just click and move around and have a look at the different things which are important to you in what you're doing within your role. So my role was to help Pinky create the map, add layers to it, go out and see our partners to see what data we could get from them to see if it was worth using in the map as well. This map has the ability to continuously improve and evolve as we evolve as a fire and rescue service and how we evolve working with our partners. So the data warehouse is basically an amalgamation of all our data sources so we can report across all those systems in one place. For the first time we can be connected, truly connected with real-time data. We've never had this before. So we can actually bring a central source of knowledge and intelligence to the service in the past, if we wanted to get data from multiple places, we'd have to pull them in separately. Whereas now, with it in one place, all in the same format, layout and style, it's a lot easier for reporting. So whatever reporting tool you want to use can sit over the top of the data warehouse. I'm really lucky to have an amazing team that worked really hard to pull together because it's quite a complex subject. This is a starting point for us. It's the first time we've ever done anything like this. And the data warehouse opens so many doors moving forward for the service with data visualisation and the possibilities. I'm sure you'll agree, fantastic stuff. <laughs> and I am delighted to announce that the innovation of the year goes to Amber's warning campaign and the team behind it. Would Katie Round and her team members Please join us. Amber's warning was a truly innovative approach to the service. Across our social media channels, it was viewed more than 120,000 times, with one post alone having 11,999... They didn't round that up, did they? <laughs> uh, they had 11,999 engagements and it was shared more than 300 times. That's fantastic. Well done. <laughs> Our next awards and medals go to people who have worked for the service for some considerable time. 20 years and many more in some cases. It now gives me great pleasure to invite the Lord Lieutenant of Hampshire, Mr. Nigel Atkinson Esquire, to make his opening address and present the Long Service and Good Conduct Medals. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, High Sheriff, Madam Mayor, Chief Officer, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me once again to your celebrating success evening. I think it's about my fourth visit now. It's always an important date in my diary to share with you the successes of our fire officers. As Lord Lieutenant, I have a very close relationship with the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, and I'm delighted to be able to support the Chief Officer and his officers whenever I'm able to. You all do a superb job, often under very difficult circumstances. And on behalf of the people of Hampshire, may I take this opportunity to thank you for the work that you all do on our behalf. I'm once again hugely impressed by the stories of heroism, selflessness and community service carried out by your officers. The stories we hear about each year further demonstrate the professionalism, compassion and pride with which you all approach your jobs. The fire service has earned its rightful place in the hearts of a public 
who truly value your work and the service provided. And every year we are reminded why, and 2019 has been no exception. Throughout this period, the services staff again rose to the challenge magnificently to ensure incidents were resolved both quickly and efficiently. Of course, these responses are only the highly visible ones, but I know of the tireless work that goes on behind the scenes, day to day, to ensure the safety of the people of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. <laughs> I'm delighted to hear that firefighting remains a role that is so highly prized and respected that recruitment this year attracts almost a thousand applicants at every intake, and that is quite staggering. I'm sure these latest recruits will, as those before them, embrace the challenges of an increasing diverse role, whilst upholding the finest traditions of the past. If I may move from the newest recruits to some of our most long-serving, I thought it was quite incredible that the Hampshire Service uh, received three Queen's Fire Service medals in one year, and that is very outstanding. Andy Bowers, Jasper Taylor, and J Jerry Leonard, all of whom I presented awards to in the past, have between them served more than 100 years. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> During this time, those three have saved countless lives, driven up national standards, and raised an enormous amount for charity particularly Jasper, and I remember three or four years ago hearing about what he achieved uh, in, the, uh, in Southampton Guild Hall. Um, so many congratulations to all. So looking at these role models uh, and countless others within the force must be daunting for our new recruits. But hopefully it is also inspiring and a reminder of the prestigious organisation that they are now part of. So I'd like to add my congratulations to all the nominees and winners this evening, but particularly to those receiving their long service medals, which I'm extremely honored to be able to present on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. Thank you very much. Okay, our first recipient is Assistant Chief Officer Stuart Adamson. Stu is currently the Director of Operations based at Service Headquarters. Stu trained right here at Headquarters before his po first posting to St Mary's Fire Station back in 1999. The next recipient is Crew Manager Neil Haggard. joined in November 1998 and served at Rushmore, where his father was also a firefighter for 25 years. He's now serving at Yately. Um, our next recipient is station manager Carl Manners. Well 
Carl is currently the Community Safety Delivery Manager for the West, and until recently he was Station Manager at Hightown Fire Station. Our next recipient is Crew Manager Robert Paul. Robert has been stationed at Odium for the whole of his 20 years, rising to rank of crew manager in 2009. Next up, firefighter Karen Ranger. Karen is an on-call firefighter at Romsey Fire Station. She's been serving her local community since joining in May 99. Our next recipient is watch manager Rob Voller. Rob is an on-call watch manager at Basingstoke Fire Station. Thanks to several temporary contracts over the last seven years, he's been involved in a number of other areas, including on-call support officer for the North Group and working in the academy on the rollout of the ultra-high-pressure lances to all stations. And it says he would love a whole-time contract. <laughs> Uh, next, I would like to invite to the stage watch manager Anthony Westbrook. Watch manager Westbrook, I'm delighted to present you with your long service and good conduct medal on behalf of the Manchester Queen. Anthony is based in the response team at headquarters. He began his fire, it says I began my, his fire service, uh, his fire service career in Kent and was stationed at Folkestone before transferring to Hampshire. Okay, well done. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Our final awards in this section are the 20-year certificates for non-uniformed staff. So please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Chantelle Archer. Chantel is Procurement and Finance Analyst for the ICT team. <laughs> for the ICT team, dealing with purchases across the service. Okay, next up to the stage, please welcome Dean Cole. Dean is the Technical Services Officer for Fleet Maintenance. He joined the service back in January 99, and Dean used to be my neighbour. He knows lots of stories, but I paid him not to tell you. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, okay, welcome to the stage, please. Danny Masters. Danny joined the service as an ICT apprentice. He is now an ICT business operations manager. Well done, everybody. And thank you to Lord Lieutenant. Um, our next awards are the 25-year certificates. Wow, I know. Um, and Councillor Chris carter -Nels joins the Chief Officer on stage to present these awards. Okay, our first recipient is station manager Jill Horn. After 21 years on watch, Jill spent the last four and a half years as part of the control management team. Well done. Crew manager Sharon Riley is our next recipient. Sharon's service began in 1994 as the Divisional Commander's Secretary before she transferred to Fire Control. Okay, next up on stage, we'd like to invite firefighter Rosemary Veck. Rosemary joined the service working as a Divisional Officer's Secretary in C Division at Headquarters. She moved to West Sussex Fire Control, based in Chichester, but is now back in Hampshire's control room on Greenwatch. Congratulations, well done. Okay, now we move on another five years. The Chief Officer will now present the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service, Meritorious. If anybody was here last year, I really struggled with that word. <laughs> We've written it out phonetically. <laughs> it's the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service Meritorious Service Medals for people who have served 30 or more years. Congratulations to all our recipients. Can I please invite to the stage watch manager Andrew Earl. <laughs> Andy joined Hampshire Fire Brigade as a retained firefighter at West End Fire Station in 1989. He transferred to Porchester um, and he's also been based at stations including Eastney, Eastleigh, sorry, Copner and Cosham. His current role as watch manager in the Arson Task Force based at Service Headquarters. Well done. Our next recipient is station manager Dave Graham.
<laughs> Dave is currently serving as a station manager in the operations department at Service Headquarters. Next, please welcome to the stage station manager Paul Parry. just begun a new role as station commander of the risk-based inspection team at SHQ. Before this, he held a variety of roles, including station manager of St Mary's Fire Station. Well done. Assistant Fire Investigator Sean White, would you please like to make your way to the stage? Sean began his fire service career at Gospel Fire Station. He joined the Arson Task Force in 2012 and became a fire investigation dog handler in 2014. Well done. Congratulations, all of you. We now move on to the 35-year bar and lapel badge. And I think you need to put your hands together for these guys, I mean. Um, congratulations, first of all. Would you like to make your way to the stage? Firefighter David Holloway. This is quite nerve-wracking, isn't it, right? I mean... <laughs> Firefighter David has been serving the local community in Romsey as an on-call firefighter for the last 35 years, and he says there's still more to come. Amazing. You are amazing. OK, please welcome to the stage firefighter Kevin O'Connell. Well done. <laughs> Kevin joined the service in 1984 at Bewley Fire Station before moving to Hardley in 88, where he served until his retirement in April this year. Well done. Congratulations. We now move on to our 40-year bar and lapel badge. So please congratulate, first of all, watch manager A.D. Smith. Aidy has been watch manager at Bishop's Waltham Fire Station since March 20, uh, sorry, 2006. He's served all his career at Bishop's Waltham and says he's still enjoying the challenge. Very nice. Our final awards in this long service section go to two individuals who have served for a whopping 45 years. First of all, please congratulate firefighter Brian Cole.
Now, this is, this is a good story, right? You'll enjoy this one. Brian joined the service in April 74. That was in the days before alerters when he had a bell outside his bedroom door for nighttime call-outs and a siren on the fire station tower for daytime calls. Yes, wonderful. That's great stuff. Okay, please congratulate our next recipient, Group Manager Jerry Leonard. Jerry is the group manager of Winchester and Tess Valley Group. Uh, throughout his career, he has served at many stations in whole time and on on-call roles. Earlier this month, Jerry received his Queen's Fire Service Medal at Buckingham Palace from Prince William. A very proud day. Well done. Congratulations. We now move on to our community and voluntary awards. Councillor Carter is going to make these presentations. Thank you. Now, in true awards ceremony tradition, all the Celebrating Success Awards remain a closely guarded secret until tonight, or unless you were in here earlier when I was rehearsing and didn't realise that I'd given... Anyway, right, we're not going to go over that. I've just pointed out my mistakes. Um, so I won't keep you in suspense any longer. I'm sure you would like to know who the recipients of the awards are. Our first category is Partnership of the Year. Let's take a look at this year's nominations. Partnership of the Year. Asian Fire Service Association. So APSA is a national support group for underrepresented groups within the fire service and members of the NHS. It was a support group within London Fire and Rescue, so over the last 10 years it has grown nationally. Most fire and rescue services are now members. I think they're fantastic, not just as chairman of AFSA, but also as the leading force behind the event. The AFSA Spring Conference, I think it's one of the best AFSA events that's ever been held. From the big ticket items of having John Barnes to hearing the individual stories of firefighters and hearing what exciting things were being done to make the fire service a more inclusive place. People are talking more about AFSA and wanting to attend our conferences. I do want people to come to an AFSA conference and think I want to go back and make my organisation more inclusive. b &Q. B and Q and HFRS have been in a partnership with the Primary Authority Scheme since its inception really in 2014. It's a place that we can go to try and set a national sort of standard. They've developed their safety within their business because we were able to adapt their policies or help them to adapt their policies, work with them on their risk assessment process and actually put their programme into place. Our relationship is very much a two-way thing. We obviously contact Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service if we have any concerns, but likewise we've been contacted to ask about certain product ranges. Probably one of the most important is in regards to product safety testing. We get many, many products come through our business to look at before we roll them out into the stores, and some of those maybe have fire safety issues or concerns. We're able to share that with the fire service. They can take away sample products sometimes and do their own testing and research on that product and we're constantly looking at ways to make them safer. It's a reassurance really to know that we've got that arrangement and that partnership in place. Ministry of Defence Police, Boat Unit. So we provide 24-7 armed security to the naval base to protect the dockyard waterfront and also to provide escort inbound and outbound of all of um, the warships that come and go from here to protect uh, Her Majesty's Naval Base Portsmouth. We had an issue of getting transported to incidents at sea so we saw an opportunity to uh, contact them as a partner. We've worked together at a number of incidents over the years, uh, providing sort of waterborne access for HFRS personnel out to sea. And then a uh, decision was made more recently to formalise that process into an MOU for HFRS personnel to be taken out to any waterborne uh, locations uh, using our fleet of vessels that we have here. It will definitely speed up our response times to any incidents in the Solent. And working with the same teams, 
more repetitively, they would understand our requirements more. You know, anything that uh, is going to affect HFRS out on the water, fires on ships or anything of that nature is clearly going to have an impact on the, the business of the dockyard here. Uh, so we have a shared interest to serve the, serve the public, uh, keep people safe. And we very much enjoy working with HFRS, look forward to the uh, relationship going forwards and uh, we're delighted to be nominated for the award. Amazing nominees, and I can now reveal that the winners of the 2019 Partnership of the Year Award, as voted for by Hampshire Fire and Rescue staff, is the Asian Fire Service Association. Please welcome to the stage Dalvinder Rai, Jagtar Singh and Mohammed Jogi. Well done. AFSA promotes inclusion and diversity across the sector for all races and genders and looks at issues surrounding mental illness and disability. Hampshire was the venue for the AFSA Spring Conference in June 19 and the service co-hosted the event. Well attended by 140 delegates, it was hailed as the best AFSA conference ever. Football legend John Barnes, music icon Craig David, both put in an appearance at the two-day spring conference. Well done. <laughs> Our second award is the supporting organisation of the year. This goes to an organisation that has shown considerable support to the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. Let's hear from our nominees. Supporting Organisation of the Year, First Bus. First Bus have been helping us out for over 30 years in supplying transport for our legendary OAP show. Without question, they always jump at the chance to help us out and provide two buses and two drivers who will go out of their way to accommodate us. We do an awful lot of work with the IAPs, with disabled people. It's one of the things that we are very, very focused on as a company. It's not just about lifting and shifting people. Let's actually do something for the community. Let's be a part of it. It's not just about the transport, it's about their attitude and the way that they approach the event itself. They join in, they make sure that the senior citizens are all with their friends and family, and they make sure that everybody gets there and everybody gets home, but equally that they provide them almost an entertainment in themselves. The drivers that have done it have loved it. I mean, obviously they sit in on the show as well, so they get to see what's going on, but I think a lot of them love the interaction with the people. It's a lot more personal than just the normal pick-up, drop-off on a service bus. They actually get to sit and chat with them as well, and they like that. Rapid Relief Team. The Rapid Relief Team offers a unique catering service to the emergency services across the UK. They provide us welfare facilities, so they come along free of charge and then they set up and provide us hot, cold drinks depending on what time of year it is. Maybe a hot burger or a packet of crisps or something. The relationship's been going for quite a few years now and it sort of organically grew from them just turning up to a, a formal arrangement. Working with Hampshire Fire and Rescue is always a very inspirational experience. They were massively involved in the Ocado incident, so they were there for the whole time. Over the three day period, we serve just over 3,000 bacon rolls, over 4,500 hot drinks, and we are very glad to have been able to provide some small relief to everybody that's working on that. Well, they were an integral part in us being able to deal with that incident because having welfare on scene allows us to use our resources more flexible rather than having to constantly churn through resources and send them back to stations so they get their welfare breaks. And it can't be underestimated how important that is and what a, what a difference it makes to be able to just stop, have a pause, have a hot drink and perhaps something to eat and then allow us to carry on with our job. So no, it's a, it's a big thank you really. Portsmouth Guildhall. 
So the Guild Hall is a charity itself and we believe in supporting other charities in the city. We support the Senior Citizen Show here at the venue um, and we support the firefighters with that event. I nominate the Portsmouth Guild Hall because they provided us now with the most excellent venue for the Senior Citizens Party that they help us with because it provides everything we need. The seating arrangements, the, the catering arrangements, obviously the stage for the show itself and it's a really nice central historic location that everybody identifies with and they've been absolutely fantastic in providing us with all the amenities that we require. The participants on stage, the firefighters that are performing and the audience are loving it just as much. There's a real energy and buzz. It would be great to see it just keep growing and getting bigger. So I would say a massive thank you to Portsmouth Guildhall for everything they've done over the last few years but also their ongoing support. They go above and beyond making the show a success and enjoyable and we really appreciate their input so thank you. Wonderful stuff. Can I get a ticket to the show, please? So, Supporting Organisation of the Year winner is the Rapid Relief Team. Please keep your applause going. Jodie Meek, Regional Team Leader. For several years now, the Rapid Relief Team has provided welfare support to the service free of charge and on a completely voluntary basis. The team not only provides hot food and drinks, but they're also there with a friendly smile for those, incident, those on the incident ground. Operational crews are always grateful for their welfare support at incidents. Well done. We now move on to our Voluntary Recognition Awards covering charity and volunteer activities. The first of these is our Charity Supporter of the Year Award, which recognises the importance of charitable work. And there's no video, is there? No, sorry. <laughs> Are we live? <laughs> this year, the award has once again been sponsored by ExxonMobil at the Fawley Refinery. Let's hear from our shortlisted nominees. Here it is. Charity Supporter of the Year, sponsored by ExxonMobil. The Gary Buchanan Cup Rugby Match. So the NHS Rugby Match started three years ago. They decided to put the Caution team up against anyone from the rest of the service. <laughs> and the Caution Crusaders against the Hampshire Barbarians rugby charity match was born. Unfortunately it's been Barbarians win three years in a row. We've taken close a couple of years. When they got on the field the rivalry is paramount. It's a good chance for them to bump heads and uh, get stuck into each other few rib crunching tackles and um, they all seem to be enjoying themselves. Peterfield have been absolutely fantastic with hosting us and organising all the lunchtime meals as well. A dear friend of ours, Gary Buchanan, uh, lost his battle against cancer. Crews locally thought it would be a great idea to rename it the Gary Buchanan Cup, so that's been a really nice touch. First year it was with Everyman Cancer and Firefighters Charity as well, not last year, the year before it was Everyman. This year we solely did it for Firefighter Charity. We also did it as a support for the guys that are doing the Everest Basis Camp Challenge this year. I know that this year it was about £3,000 that we raised in total. Round the Island Kayak Event. The Round the Island Kayak Event uh, has been running for approximately seven years now. The first year we actually did it, there was 20 kayakers and we have gone up to about 60 kayakers, I think. The event is quite simply kayaking around Hailing Island. They've had you know, high winds and waves and battling against the tide, so it is an arduous event. It was when we started, it was mostly firefighters. Yeah. Most of the panels were firefighters, and now it's mostly members of the public. A lot of people get to hear about it. It is 14 miles of paddling in the sea, and so it is difficult, but people do turn up who have never paddled before, and pretty much everyone can do it. The event's a great fundraiser for the Firefighters Charity as well as the RNLI, so they've been able to raise £40,000 over the years. It's been a great event, it's good for team building, it's good for relationships between 
the fire service and the ONLI, which I'm involved with. My first year taking well. part, really tough, but absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. And these guys do an amazing job organising it, all of the committee to make sure that it's smooth, everyone has a great time, everyone's safe, and come back every year. Paul McKay. Paul McKay is a enthusiast. He supports us with events. The trucks that I own, one is a 1982 Bedford 2kg, the other one is a 1982 Dennis RS Pump Escape. I've done my first charity event with the truck in, in April. I'm a member of the Fire Service Preservation Group. They organise once a year an annual fire engine run for children from Pian Brown Ward at General Hospital. And he helps us every Christmas now with our massive fundraising event we do with uh, Santa Claus. Feedback from the locals. Oh, they love it, absolutely love it. The grandparents saying they remember when they'd done it 30 years ago. So it's sort of like got three generations still on the side of the road watching it. We raise about £4,000 each year. And to be honest with you, without Paul, we couldn't raise what we do. I don't mind giving up my time, especially where it involves charity with children. My object and aim is to support local charities. He doesn't ask for a penny, and it's all raised for charity. Fabulous. Before revealing the winner, I'd like to invite Anita McCurdy, Forley Refinery Process Manager, to join us to present the award. And I'm over the moon to announce that our winners tonight are the team behind the Round the Island Kayak event. The Round the Island kayak event has come a long way since its first year in 2012 when just 20 participants paddled the 14 mile course around Hailing Island. It now attracts around 60 paddlers with an age range from 13 up to 79. And this much anticipated event would not have become what it was without the ongoing dedication of Mark Parnell, uh, Perry Dodgson, Martin Elliott and Nikki Fisher, and they are also supported by Jules Hewson of the RNLI. Congratulations. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to our Firefighters Charity Award, which is made by Hampshire Fire and Rescue to recognise support for the charity by an individual or a team. This award is selected by the Hampshire Committee of the Firefighters Charity and Service Champion. Assistant Chief Officer Stu Adamson will join us to present the award. I just thought it was a bit awkward on bringing my certificate back, but I'm not actually bringing it back. It's all right. Do it again. It's all right. <laughs> So it, um, it allows me great pleasure to uh, just say a few words to plug the Firefighters Charity and then just to introduce uh, the winners of this. So um, support for my firefighter colleagues, my um, staff colleagues, um, past and present, and their families um, come from the Firefighters Charity. That gives them access to um, respite, rehab, um, illness, um, recuperation, and also with the added... Uh, dimension of uh, treatment around mental health which has just been added just recently it's a great addition to the service and I think without that support for all of those people I think we would really struggle so it is a really great um, great service for us this year's um, this year's recipient recipients is is kind of a long burn uh, recipient if you like so this um, this has been running for more than 35 years we've tried to go back as far as uh, our records take us and at least 35 years we've got records um, and it's a small band of volunteers um, with a huge commitment around processing um, monthly payments about banking contributions administering a lottery draw um, and then distributing that prize money and it's actually really great I've had in my 20 years um, I've had one um, 
one win and it's been great and it's a real it's a real uh, lovely thing to get a check through um through the internal mail for a small amount but actually really lovely knowing that for that's 20 years i've been supporting the the firefighters charity across its 35 years we know that it's been it's raised well over a hundred thousand pounds wow. which is a huge amount and over that period of time i think that that's why we wanted to pick this year um the lottery um for hampshire fire and rescue service So, would members of the, of the HFRS lottery team, Sancha Andrews, Angela Alley, and Teresa Lovett, like to join us on stage to collect your award? Sancha, Angela and Teresa all helped to administer Hampshire Fire and Rescue Services' very own lottery. Staff can elect to contribute a pound a month from their salary to win monthly prizes. Well done. We end this section of the awards with our Volunteer of the Year, which recognises the invaluable work that volunteers do to support the fire service. Let's hear a bit about the work of our shortlisted volunteers. Volunteer of the Year. Crew Manager, James Malcolm. Crew Manager, James Malcolm, uh, more affectionately known as Codge, was nominated for the vast amount of time he dedicates to the station and the service. More recently, he's taken on the role of repairing defective fire hose, which he does solely voluntary. We do quite a few hose repairs here at Lindhurst. It keeps me occupied, keeps me busy. I can chat to people as they come in. He's also represented Hampshire and Rescue Service at Remembrance at the Senate in 2017 and he goes across to Belgium half a dozen times a year at least for the closing of the Menin Gate and for the battlefield stalls. I think it's important to, to make the effort to go those people lay down their lives for our futures, our today. Trim, Kayleigh Monckton and Sean Gray. Trim is a peer-to-peer -peer support network following exposure to traumatic events. There's a number of people who are involved in the TRIM team, really passionate, dedicated people. Sean and Kaylee's role is the, the role that people don't see, the administrative role. They're the cogs that keep the team and the process running. My role in that is day-to-day -day lead, looking after our practitioners. I look after the emails, keep an eye on the guys. If we do get any responses that come in from control and the request, I will pick that up and make sure the emails get out to the guys. And then if there is a request, then we both liaise together and if someone does need our support, then we can see who's available and get that out there. So Sean himself has developed a, a really useful app. So the app that I built was to request a TRIM assessment. I've also done it so it's for our practitioners, our assessors that go out and do the assessments. TRIM practitioners can send the information through very, very quickly and it negates the need for pens, pencils and other bits and pieces. Kaylee does a lot of the administrative work. She receives the TRIM nominations, processes those and sends requests out to the team so that they can pick up and meet up with an individual who wants a trim assessment. I would love for if we could get personnel to just take away that stigma of trim and just be more open and honest and have those chats. They've got someone neutral to speak to that's not yeah. going to judge them and it's going to support them in a safe, controlled environment. Community Safety Officer Ian Quirk. Ian has volunteered for us. The main thing Ian was doing over the last year is carrying out Safe and Wells on behalf of the fire service. Safe and Wells is a really vital because we go to a lot of vulnerable people, over 65 people who can't necessarily look after themselves. So we go around and make sure they're as safe as they can be in their own home. This was all in his own time as a volunteer and Ian carried out nearly 400 Safe and Well visits on his own, which equated to nearly 5% of all Safe and Well visits that were carried out in the service in the last 12 months. My favourite part of the job has got to be being able to, to go home at the end of the day knowing you've tried your best to help people. You know, you're not going to help everybody, but there's certain people that you can help. And it's nice when you get feedback from them. And you, know, you get an email saying, thank you very much for visiting my mum. She, she feels a lot better now that that's the you amount of her. So following his volunteering and the, the outstanding work that he's been doing for that, 
we had a vacancy as a community safety officer and now Ian works for Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service as a community safety officer working within the Fair and Gosport and Eastley group. When I was made a CSO it made my, made my year to be honest. I was really proud to join the service, worked really hard, done a lot of work and, and to be told that yes that, that work has paid off and you become a CSO it, was, it meant a lot. Amazing, fantastic contributions from all of our nominees. But the result of the staff voting is in, and I am delighted to reveal that the Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Kayleigh Monkton and Sean Gray. has been successfully embedded within the service for three years now and relies entirely on a group of dedicated and professional volunteers continually supporting their peers and their colleagues. Congratulations, well done. It's amazing what you do. Thank you. Our next section of awards are the Chief Officers Awards and we begin with the Individual of the Year Award. Let's take a look at the shortlist. <coughs> Chief Officers Individual of the Year, Nathan Barnard. I've been over in the stores, technical services stores, for 12 and a half years, and I'm also an on-call firefighter at Eastleigh. Whizzing off on his bike, gonna go and save life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see him go past. Yeah, and then he comes back and carries on. See the best of both worlds, get to see both sides of things, which is good. Most people know who I am, yeah. Normally, they normally come and see me because they want something. He works really hard, we work in one of the busiest departments, and he's constantly on the go. You know, he always helps everyone out, even if he's manic with mm. other jobs, he will always drop it and just go off and help. He's started a gym group. He actually sets up exercises after work. Started doing the circuits for myself really, it was me and a couple of others started doing it for our own benefit. It just evolved really with sort of another person in the gym who was doing something. Do you want to join us? Okay, yeah, we'll come and join. Um, and then they bring a friend and then word would get round, I'll come and join the circuits. And a few of those. Yeah, <laughs> killer. Yeah. <laughs> he motivates you, he pushes you. When I read the email, um, about my nomination, I was actually in a Twix at the time, so. Well, how he actually does fire as a health asset working with children for a better knee. <laughs> Getting involved with a few of the kids from local schools, doing some fairly fun activities, donutting down the dry ski slopes. We've been paddle boarding, which was good. He gives above and beyond for charity, for the people within the service and within the stores. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Jordan. So Sarah works within the Product Facilities team and she does a variety of different jobs. I've always sort of stayed in the same department but it's changed his name over the years and it's changed what we do but I like the job. I must have done otherwise I wouldn't have stayed <laughs> for 11 years if I didn't like it. So yeah, it's good fun. Sarah acts as a central point handling reception and calls into the team and meeting and greeting visitors, dealing with contractors on the HQ site. Very much a key player in terms of making sure things keep spinning and, and different activities keep being supported. To be honest with you, there is so much we do. There's so many ad hoc things as well, weird things that just come in and you just find a way to solve it and get on with it. But I like helping people, it's a challenge, isn't it? And I like that. I do enjoy the people I work with, we do have a laugh. She's always somebody who is a bit of an unsung hero. She's never actively sought recognition for all the extra things that she does. And I know that they're very much appreciated across the organisation. But when you get good feedback and somebody says thank you, that is so nice. It makes you feel appreciated. And you just meet different people all the time. Every day is different and you never quite know what you're going to get. Ian Quirk. Ian's volunteered to complete a lot of our lower risk, non-emergency safe mobile visits. He's gone out and done the visits to a very high standard. People have really enjoyed it, taped him well. It was really, really interesting, really eye-opening. And you meet some very nice people. 
a lot of old people want to talk about history they come out with. Absolutely fantastic. Really good feedback from the people you visited as well as the, the crews within the group that he works in. Worked really hard, done a lot of work and, and to be told that yes, that, that work has paid off and you become a CSO, is, it meant a lot. Can't have much better reference than actually doing the job, volunteering unpaid to a high quality. And the amount of business he's done and the amount of hours he's put in over the last sort of two years has been phenomenal. My favourite part of the job has got to be being able to, to go home at the end of the day knowing you've tried your best to help people. You're not going to help everybody but there's certain people that you can help and it's nice when you get feedback from them. If he does anything you ask him to do, he'll do it to the, you know, the highest quality. And he's happy to do it. He's just an all round nice guy willing to give his time and he really, really does deserve the, the job of the CSO. Phenomenal people. So it gives me great pleasure to announce that 2019 Individual of the Year is Sarah Jordan. Sarah works tirelessly within the property and facilities team. Nothing is too much trouble. A colleague once said that if he asked her to move the building an inch, she would be straight out there trying to do it. <laughs> That's high praise indeed. Well done, Sarah. <laughs> we now move on to the Chief Officer's Team of the Year Award. Let's hear from our shortlist. Chief Officers, Team of the Year. Watch Manager, Stu Godwin, and Crew Manager, James Angove. The New Forest Development School is really key to supporting and tailoring training to our newest and developing firefighters. The reason I got involved was to help bring across the basics to the firefighters and the needs of the stations, ensure that the local firefighters had that chance to learn more basic skills and practice them. It's really key as well for getting people to meet people from other fire stations. We have a very wide range of things now that we have to be trained in and to enable that all our crews are trained to the highest standards we can, these extra drill nights once a month let them learn the basics of pumps, ladders, RTC. Stu and Pasty, uh, James, have been running Develop School for a, a good number of years. So they do a lot of evening commitments, they dedicate a huge amount of their time to Hampshire Farm Rescue Service. Going forward it's working with the on-call support managers, working with them how we can develop it and ensure that we support them and the stations and give them the best training they can get. My thanks from myself and the rest of the management team in New Forest Group and I'm sure Development Firefox past and present would express their sincere thanks to you as well for everything you've done. Tadley Fire Station. So Tadley Fire Station is an on-call crew based at the north of the county. We have a team of 12 firefighters and myself. They're one of those stations that never fail to surprise me with all the charity work that they do. And they raise a huge amount of money for firefighters charity and they've really pushed themselves to the limit. I mean, the stretcher carry, I, I visited them at Basingstoke and it had been a long, long endeavour for them, but you know, their team spirit is fantastic. Walked from South Sea up to Tadley, so uh, it was some, something like 74 miles, carrying a 30 kilogram stretcher. Sally comes up with the mad ideas, she manages to get the teams and other people to get involved and it always ends up as a great event. Without my team, I'm unable to do my job properly, so it's all about us working together, achieving the objectives, whether it be an operational incident or even if it's one of our community events, whether it's a safe and well visit. Without that team, we wouldn't function. They're always committed. They've got great leadership and everything they do, they do 110%. I'm sure you'll agree, two wonderful finalists there. I can now reveal that the Team of the Year Award goes to... Tadley Fire Station. Keep the applause going. Watch manager Sally Gould and other crew members coming up onto stage to collect their award. Tadley Fire Station has been a shining example of how teamwork and leadership make a difference. 
their contribution to the firefighters' charity through events like the sponsored stretcher carry from South Sea to Tadley, car washes taking on the Three Peaks Challenge, supporting One Lads Challenge cycle rides has been amazing. Every year, they host a Christmas meal serving, over, serving around 100 meals to older people who would normally remain isolated. Well done. Watch manager Sally Gould leads by example and is a fantastic role model for women's careers in the fire service. Well done. <laughs> And thank you, Chief Officer. We now move to our final award of the evening, the Chairman's Award. This award was selected personally by Councillor Carter. And let's hear a bit about our winner. Chairman's Award. Haven't Fire Station has become a really happy place for the guys to work. We've got a workforce that are really engaged and want to be here, and if people want to come to work and enjoy being here. Haven't had to implement a flexible crewing system, but what I'm really proud about is the way that everyone has been motivated to work together and to make the crewing system work. Started off at a Better Me course, we've decided that the schools we work with have got a really good partnership. We just continued that and running it now independently. And it's a major part of our year of our youth engagement program with the local schools. We see a difference in the outcome of the children. We want to create a legacy here at Haven Fire Station that is about supporting the community, supporting young people and making a difference. We are role models in society whether we like it or not, so we've got responsibility to push that and to support people. In my mind they are a really strong team. They work well together, they're prepared to go out of their way to support each other plus to support the station. Congratulations, Haven't Fire Station. Since the beginning of 2018, the team at Haven has been working hard to make their new crewing model a success. This commitment continued throughout the year, with operational cover being maintained via the station's WhatsApp group, and a whole team resolved to make it a huge success. Huge success. <laughs> well done, congrats. I need to get this bit in as well because I think this is pretty phenomenal. The station has also continued to fully support the local community, running its highly successful A Better Me program with local schools. In addition, the team continued its own thriving firefighter development school. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> you should be very proud. Thank you very much, Councillor Carter, as well. I'd like to invite the Deputy Chief Fire Officer, Steve Apter, to the stage to make the closing address. Thank you. Thanks very much. Can you see me? Can you see me? <laughs> um, I've been informed there's been over 100 people watching this live this evening through the uh, live stream. So. Uh, 29 of them are my family. <laughs> um, just a, a couple of quick ones for me. Keep this brief because it's been a, a long night, an amazing night, quite an emotional night. Uh, just a, a comment. Neil mentioned when he first arrived on stage about the, the red backdrop. Uh, and as I've been sat there through the evening, it's some will know, although my, my actual home is the Isle of Wight, uh, my spiritual home is, is Liverpool. And I, I felt... <laughs> <laughs> I felt this was wholly appropriate. <laughs> and particularly it was celebrating success. <laughs> and actually, it did remind me of um, uh, one of the greatest leaders I think has ever walked this air, a, a chap called Bill Shankly. And, but, <laughs> yes. 
for, for those who, who don't know, Bill Shankly was uh, a manager of Liverpool Football Club in, in the very early days, and he developed a, an ethos, a culture of teamwork. And he, what he recognised was, was the responsibility the team had to the city. And I, I think there's a, a synergy between that ethos, that culture, and us as a fire and rescue service. And actually, he went further. Anybody ever been lucky enough to go to Anfield on the tour? The chosen few. Uh, there is an award. There is an award for that. I was there recently, and um, I've, I've been many times over the years. And, and there's a very famous sign. This is Anfield sign. Very famous sign. It was brought in by Bill Shanklin. It wasn't just a post on a wall. It had real meaning. The symbology of the of the uh, the logo, the brand that is Liverpool Football Club. And when he was asked in an interview once, they said, you know, what, what what's what's all about that? Because all the, the teams, even now, even though it's changed, they all touch the sign as they. They go out to play. He says there's two reasons for that. Well, he's brought Scott. I'm not going to do that. He said, one, it was to remind the team who they play for. And secondly, to remind the other team who they're playing against. Well, I was sat up tonight in this red backdrop with the, with the brand and the logo, and we were talking about the strength of the badge. And there's lots of conversations at the minute. And for me, when you listen to some of the stories, I've listened to some of these stories, and I've only been here seven months this time. Um, but I'm really enjoying it, really enjoying myself. But it reminds me of where we are as an organisation, because actually, when we listen to the stories, when we, and we know about the stories that are going on out there, tonight we've only really touched the, sort of the tip of the iceberg, really, of some of the amazing things going on across this organisation and the Isle of Wight. But actually, what this reminds us of, and tonight reminds us of, one, we work for an amazing organisation. But it also reminds me, as somebody who's come back into this organisation, I know loads of people who want to work in this organisation. So there you go, I've managed to turn a Liverpool Bill Shankly story <laughs> into association with our celebrating success. Hopefully, Liverpool will also be celebrating success. <laughs> um, listen, ladies and gents, uh, just a, a couple of thank yous from me, really, just in terms of wrapping up. Um, our thanks to, to Zoe. Uh, I've never met Zoe, but Zoe's voice has woken me up many, many mornings. <laughs> sorry. On the radio. Watching. There we are, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's gone nine. We're okay. <laughs> We're safe. But Zoe, uh, thanks ever so much uh, for bringing a bit of professionalism uh, to the stage. I wasn't here. I've never. This Which is my first. Was that? First. <laughs> this is my first celebrating success. But I gather the old Depp. I can't remember his name. He. Uh, he had to. What? What's well, fact? He. Uh, he had. To, he got told to shut up by Zoe last year. So that's not going to happen this year. So, as my old dad taught me once, he said, "Son, if you can't earn respect, buy it." So we've got a gift for Zoe to say thank you. Oh. Uh, a little token of our of our uh, esteem and thank you for uh, helping us yet again to celebrate these amazing people. It's an honour and a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Zoe. Um, just a, a couple of things for me, just to, to close the evening. One, thank you and congratulations to everybody, whether you're long-listed, short-listed, and those of us across the organisation who hopefully are inspired tonight to put pen to paper, or that's what I do. Matt's going to show me how to switch the computer on. Um, <laughs> but to nominate, nominate. Because you know what? The simplest thing, and somebody said it earlier on in one of the video clips, just saying thank you. Because we're all busy, and we're busier than ever. Yeah? In an organisation that strives to be the best, we are going to be busy. But just say thank you. Just take time out. Another theme we've picked up this evening is a theme around mental health. And it's a growing issue. And many of us in the room, uh, through personal experience or experience of our colleagues, will know what it's like. I'll put my hand up. I had to reach out for some assistance over the last two years. Challenging period in my career. But what we've heard tonight is the sport. People are out there for us, yeah? The organisation cares, we care. 
So please, if anybody knows of anybody, either here, back home, or across the service who's struggling, please reach out. We've seen some of the award-winning uh, stuff, such as Trim, that's going on in this amazing organisation. So please, don't suffer in silence. And just to finish off with, I think there's two, three themes really uh, come out tonight loud and clear for me. Pride, the pride we've got in working for an, an outstanding organisation. But an organisation, as I've said many times, is not a thing, it's not an entity. It's not, you know, the building, the, the fabric. The organisation is us. It's you. We set the tone, we set the culture. And the culture I've seen, experienced tonight, and some of the stories we've heard uh, are quite, quite incredible. The other one is around teamwork. Yeah, we may work, some of us work in individual roles, some of us work uh, sometimes in isolated roles. All of us work in a team, and we're all there for each other. It's an incredible, incredible organisation. And the final one is just to say a word that we don't often use as firefighters, because it's all about selflessness and bravery, but it's love. And I love my job, and I love working with you. So if we can all just turn around, the person next to you, don't tell them you love them. <laughs> don't tell them you love them. Save that. But just say... Thank you for what you do for Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. Ladies and gents, I'll hand back to Zoe, and I will not make the error of my predecessor by closing the evening. <laughs> Thanks, ladies and gents. Should I not mention that I'm an Everton fan right now, then? Oh, no, I'm only kidding. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Um, so... All that remains for me to say tonight is thank you very, very much for inviting me back. Um, I am proud and honoured. It gets me emotional every time I come here because I can feel the passion that you have for the fire service. And it's amazing to see. It's inspiring. And I am honoured to be here tonight. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.